Hey guys, how's it going? Kriparian here. Today I want to give you guys uh, a lesson in the new ways of Hunter. Now I think this is going to actually be true for all the play modes, but I noticed it being true at least in my own arena runs playing Hunter. And it has to do with how traps are played. The reason this is important is because the Hunter Spellstone allows you to get additional wolves and allows you to get an additional game-winning amount of tempo when played on turn 5 if you play traps secrets before it. So um, prior to this expansion, whenever you played really any secret class, but let's just say Hunter because that's kind of what I'm addressing here. When you played Hunter and you had a secret, you waited for a good opportunity for your secret to have optimal effect and then you would play it, right? I mean, that's just, it makes sense. So like, you know, if Explosive Trap was good to play, you'd play it. If it was not good to play, you wouldn't play it. If Freeze Trap was just encountering a whole bunch of 1-1s on the board, you wouldn't play Freeze Trap, right? But then if it was big minions, you'd play Freeze Trap. Really obvious stuff, right? But that, got, that kind of changed this expansion because of the Hunter Spellstone, because you really want a maximum tempo swing on turn five with the Spellstone effect. Playing Secrets from Hunter actually has changed its dynamic. It's changed the dynamic to the point where even if you have a secret that gets really crappy value, if it's really shitty to play a secret, a lot of the time it's a good idea to play it anyway just to get that crazy, even crazier than otherwise, Spellstone turn 5. So you're playing secrets even when they suck. And, you know, when I was playing a hunter run the other day, I'm like, oh man, I was so stupid to do that. My mistake, I played the wrong secret. But then... You know, game after game, it is not just one game I want to highlight for you guys. More than just one game. I thought I was misplaying playing these secrets, but after the turns rolled out, I realized it was actually the best play. Uh, it was actually psyching out my opponent. And this is where the lesson steps in. It turns out, uh, Hunter secrets are no longer played when they are good. They're played because they want to boost the spellstone. So um, the lesson is, if you think there's no chance your opponent played a specific secret, let's say you did have a bunch of 1-1 minions, your opponent played a secret, you'd imagine, oh crap, it's Explosive Trap. Actually, now more than ever, it's probably not. It's probably just a secret that they wanted to play to tempo you out on turn 5. And this is actually really cool. Uh, I didn't think that the Hunter Spellstone would ultimately change the secret mechanic to where there's even more depth to a pretty interesting part of Hearthstone. And I think if you really look into it, if you really think about it, if you see the games I'm about to show you guys, you'll see just how interesting this shift is and how unpredictable uh, pre-turn 5 traps can be uh, in Hearthstone these days. So check out the clips, let me know what you think, and I'll see you guys in a little bit. More paladins, more going second. It's pretty nice though. Reporting for duty. Okay, that's that's not what I wanted to play. It might have an interesting effect though. Because this next trap is gonna have no idea what it is. I wasted freeze trap. What is this going to be? Another freeze trap? Just going to send that thing right in there. Glory to the Sindori. Okay. Actually improves their position. Reporting for duty. Wow. That garbage play was actually the best play overall. 
And now he's dead. Game over. Because the freeze trap juked him on the following trap, and playing both traps lets me have this crazy tempo turn. <laughs> Misplay equals best play. Quality. Sure. I'm going to play around Spike Ridge Steed, as every single Paladin this week that I've played has played it against me, typically on turn 6. I saw an arena guide like at the top of Reddit like two days ago that was like, you don't really need one drops and two drops, you just need like big minions, big minions are back. What a bunch of bullshit. Every single game I lose, I just get curved up by one drops and two drops when they go first. Like every single game. Uh, I've lost like one control game in the last like three or four days. Those are the only games you lose. I think it was likely possible in the first week when people were noobs and didn't pick one drops and two drops. As a result, you didn't have to pick one drops or two drops. So if you got a greedier deck than them, you won. But I think now that we've moved on from that, uh, it's a little more uh, challenging to do that. Being good at control doesn't help you win when you get curved out. I sense your <sighs> Come on, something not shit. Oh, that's pretty interesting, actually. All right, I'm game. Let's do this. Nope. Nuh uh My five one. Not shit. Oh, that's actually a pretty good one. Holy fucking a! All right. Priest and Mage have a lot of board clears right now, but it's still, like, really inconsistent. You can't expect to draw a board clear every game you need it, like, 12 games in a row, right? The absolute perfect potion. Great. That's just great. Filling the board against Kazakus? Well, he wouldn't know that I'd play four three threes. He'd have no reason to get a five-cost board clear. Uh, yeah, to actually get the board clear as well, and he needed the tempo minion to actually compete. So, fuck me. Trading is stupid. It was a good order. It got taunt. Gonna use some backward psychology here. 
why would it be freeze trap, right? Why would it be? No, there's no way this guy's sniping. No. Game over.